From the fall of 1993 through the winter of 1996, the Canisius College Golden Griffins basketball program enjoyed its winningest three-year period in the school's illustrious history. During that time, the Griffs won 62 games, a figure unsurpassed in the 116 seasons of basketball on the Main Street campus. The genesis for this group's success can be traced to the tail end of the 92-93 season, when the underdog Griffs shattered Iona's title hopes with a shocking 64-62 win over the Gales in the MAC tournament. Finky Johnson's rim rattler with two seconds remaining helped lift the Griffs from a six-year cloud and provide them with a confidence that first-year coach John Beeline had been preaching since his hire the previous year. Being able to beat Iona and get to the semifinal uh, in, that, in that tournament was huge and we needed a lot of things to go our way. But, but Binky went coast to coast. Uh, the ball hit every part of the net as it was going down. I remember it vividly. Uh, but it put us in the semifinal against Niagara University, who was, who was a really good team that year. And uh, it really changed a lot. That our, We got past that first round. We played Niagara really tough the next day. We lost. But I think everybody that was coming back sensed, uh, and we had everyone coming back, sensed that uh, better things were to come. Heading into the 93-94 season, with their hopes boosted from the previous year's finish, the Griffs immediately bolstered their confidence by knocking off Gonzaga and UB in the Canisius Classic. After a discouraging loss to St. Francis, the Griffs season was at a crossroads. We had a lot of turnovers. They played with a ball that was blown up so tight that a ball bounced all over the place. And I was so upset on the way back after that game. And I think we might have been 6-6 six and six or around 500. Uh, little did I know that I think we'd only lose one more game uh, or two more games the rest of the year with 18 or so to go. Kanisha's rebounded. And in mid-January, an eight-point road win at Niagara sent the Griffs on a 16-game winning streak that was one of the nation's best. Canisius wouldn't lose again until March, and along the way, they would capture the regular season MAC crown and tie the school record for wins with 22. An invite to the NIT, the school's first in nine years, was the team's reward. Uh, we went on a run, we won on the road, we won at home, we won on the road. Um, our guys just were 100% bought in to playing as a team. Uh, there was great moments all during the year uh, that really made us a championship team, a, a real true regular season champion, which at the Michigan level, that's the true measure of success. Did you win it? it and you're looking at the big picture. That team won it looking at the big picture. The 1994-95 campaign will go on record as one of the greatest seasons in Canisius history. A preseason NIT win in the Palestra over Penn got the ball rolling. The Griffs' first win at St. Bonaventure in 52 years shortly followed. And then an epic rally from 20 points down in Cincinnati gave the Griffs a shocking win over the nation's 13th ranked squad. Before that game ever stopped, though, I remember, forget, we were at the pregame uh, banquet, you know, you're eating the chicken and the salad and everything. And we get on the elevator because it was a two floor uh, building. And I can't remember who else was on it, who would even remember this, but it was me. I know Damone James was there. And then Bob Huggins was there with his big Final Four ring and his Bob Huggins sweater. And <laughs> Damone, in a dead quiet elevator, like looks at Bob Huggins and says, Coach, you know, we're going to have to bust your ass tomorrow. You know that. And I just remember thinking, only Damone is going to look at Bob Huggins and tell him that he's going to bust his ass. Like, it was just one of those moments where you just go, man. We were up by two or something, and they had three chances. We couldn't get the rebound. They kept getting more chances to win the game and win the game. They missed every shot we won. Uh, I, uh, uh, I still couldn't believe the feeling after that game. Along the way, Canisius captured a startling 12 road kills en route to another invite to the NIT. You know, we just had the misfortune of losing in the MAC tournament. And, you know, the NIT was kind of that secondary, like, you know, and, and I'll never forget, like, Beeline came back after a recruiting visit, maybe, I don't know where he was, and he basically lined us up and said, you either in or you're out. Next thing you know, we're playing Seton Hall, pretty good crowd. We go to Bradley, and we won on a fluke, but we won. 
And now we play Washington State, which is as close to the atmosphere in Moto Auditorium that I could remember from the days of Calvin Murphy playing Bob Lanier. Now the curtain that was up and 9,000, 10,000 people were there rooting for Canisius, and we played a fabulous game to win. Uh, Chris Young hitting a huge bank shot that he claims today he still called from about 25 feet right in front of me to seal the win. Nicky Frazier coming in and just back cutting for a layup. Uh, and our guys closed it out at the foul line. It was a wonderful night in Buffalo and a wonderful night for, for those guys, these guys on this team. Even though we lost the last two games in that tournament with the consolation, like that entire run, you know, I think for me becomes like, you know, the moment that, that remember the energy, the vibe, the feeling, the atmosphere. With the core returning in 95-96, hopes were again high for this band of Golden Griffins. However, a late season injury to MAC Player of the Year Daryl Barley forced him out of three conference games, and then a thumb injury took him out of the MAC tournament. This tough group of Griffs rallied around their injured star and through three grueling days found a way to capture the school's only MAC tournament title. This quintet certainly won for the thumb. And the Golden Griffins start the celebration. They head for the big dance. The emotional scene here in Albany. Waited a long time, Tim. Looking back 20 years, this group's success should be easy to digest. Beeline's four assistants at that time are all head coaches. John has gone on to great things at three schools. The players earned their degrees, and several have gone on to earn advanced degrees. This wasn't just a group of overachievers from a small school in Buffalo, New York, accomplishing great things. It was the triumph of a tremendous work ethic on and off the court, the will to fight through adversity, and the belief in one another to become champions.